When it comes to Etsy SEO, there's definitely a right, a wrong, and a better way to go about it. If you're super new and you don't even understand what SEO means and what it means for Etsy, SEO stands for search engine optimization. And normally when we think about SEO and what we can do for SEO for our Etsy listings, we normally associate that to our titles, our tags, our descriptions, our category, and our attributes, right? Those are the core elements that exist in our listing that we can fill out and put in those keywords that help us show up on search pages. So normally people associate SEO only with what are the keywords that we're putting in our listings because those keywords determine how we show up in the Etsy search pages. But one thing that I just want to point out right here is that yes, keywords are very, very important. And by the end of this video, we really want to be able to hone in on what our best case scenario keywords are based on data, but then also our own higher level thinking of keyword product fit. And does this really describe our product because Etsy is really putting emphasis that they really want people to understand what the product is by you describing it properly. But also to get a holistic view of what are all the things that are at play here when they're factoring in keywords and other variables that they're judging you on. So like I said, normally when you think of SEO, you're just thinking of the keywords, but I like to go to Etsy and get my information directly from Etsy because when you're playing in someone else's sandbox, that means you're playing against somebody else's set of rules. And if those set of rules are constantly changing, you're going to want to be informed and be updated on the new algorithm updates, just like on YouTube and social media, how there's a constant algorithm updates. It's no different than third party selling on Etsy. So if we come into Etsy right here, you can see that when it comes to your keywords and your listings, right? Obviously keywords, like I said, plays a role into how you show up. But again, to get that holistic view, it's not just limited to keywords. So Etsy saying here that title and tag relevancy, which is keywords, but let's just talk about that a little bit deeper for a second. So what does that mean? That means that if you have keywords, banana and backpack in your listing, you're going to show up for banana and backpack. But if the keywords are put together as banana backpack, if someone searches banana backpack, and you have those words together versus separate, that is gonna make you priority over somebody that might have those two words, but not actually together. They're also saying that if you have keywords in your title, but then also in your tags, right, that makes you more relevant for that keyword if someone's searching for that keyword. So if there's a really, really important keyword that we did our research on, right, maybe we wanna consider including that in our title and our tags. We're gonna give more examples of this later. And finally, the beginning of our titles are the most vital keyword positions because obviously that is the first thing that the buyers have the ability to read when they first see the listing for the first time. But beyond that, other things that they're judging your listing on is item attribute relevancy, where you have the option to add attributes to help just further describe your product, right? So anywhere where Etsy has a form for you to fill out or any opportunity that you can input more information or more data about your product, you don't want to overlook it. So now after you select a category, right, you have attributes that will pop up. You can actually go in and further describe what the size, the color, the material is in the attribute section. So you're going to want to make sure you fill that out, right? Another one that goes beyond keywords is your listing quality. So we can assume that they're probably judging us on, okay, well, out of everyone that looks at this, how many people are clicking our listing over others? Because we have a really aesthetic image, right? Out of those people, how many people are actually purchasing? purchasing the product, right? How many people are liking it compared to actually having a buyer's experience and making a sale with that product or buying the product, right? And they say that the actions contribute to a listing's quality score. And I am going to guess that this is super, super important. And the reason I'm pointing these other factors out, even though we're talking about SEO, is that a lot of times newer sellers or even seasoned sellers, when they see a decline in sales or they don't get the results they want right away, they want to blame SEO. <laughs> and that is why I'm putting emphasis on SEO is more than just keywords. And a lot of the times the reason people like to blame keywords and SEO or the standard idea of SEO is because it's generally an easy thing to fix. And people really have a harder time reflecting in themselves to see, okay, what is the actual quality of my listing here? Am I actually selling a more competitive product or a good price product in comparison to my competition? Because those are harder attributes to fix about your business or 
for your listings. Another attribute that they're judging you on when it comes to SEO is customer and market experience on Etsy. So obviously your reviews are gonna play into a huge factor here. For US shoppers, they're saying free shipping. When it comes to free shipping, I don't recommend actually that everyone just goes and offers free shipping. This is actually contingent on different niches, which you can cue a video next to see more information on this. The, another one is recency. So how young is the listing compared to how it's actually performing? And finally, shop buyer location. So if you're in Australia, right, what they have found, I guess, from collecting data from thousands of users is that those buyers normally want to buy from more local people in their area so they don't have to pay insane shipping fees, right? But overall, the point of this was just to give you a more holistic view that there's more things at play here than just your keywords. Guys, if you're enjoying this content right now, I just would like to say thank you for making it to this point in the video. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more from me and turn on that notification bell because I post videos regularly. All right, let's get back into the video. But now that we have an understanding of the full picture here, let's dive into those main core attributes when it comes to optimizing the SEO for your store. So obviously, like we mentioned, title is the first one. Basic information here is that in your title, you can have up to 140 characters, but when you're actually looking at your listings from a search page, only 50 to 60 characters actually show. So they're putting emphasis on those, again, those 50 to 60 characters that are actually showing up in the search pages in comparison to your competition. Other quick notes are that these characters can only be used once in your title. These characters can't be used at all. And finally, in your titles, you can't have more than three words that have all caps in it because that really just scares people away. In this recent 2023 article, they actually gave an example of what a poorly written title would look like. And honestly, reading it now, you know, this is something that we would actually encourage a year ago. So they're saying that adding a long list of keywords to your titles may confuse buyers or turn them off to your listing. For example, this kind of title might be difficult for a buyer to understand at glance. Personalized dop kit, men's leather dop kit, groomsman gift, add a monogram. And they're actually suggesting that you shorten the title to something this short, monogram, leather, dop kit, groomsman gift, where basically you have no repetition of any words and it's just a one super long tail keyword that is getting in a lot of words basically. And they even have a note here that is saying that even though you will see a lot of sellers with good ranking listings that have keyword stuff titles, they're saying that's not going to serve you in the future rendition of Etsy listings. So if you're coming to the gates now, it's better to do what they're recommending and not confuse people with your titles. So they're saying, even though you can see people doing it still and they're because it's older listings, that doesn't mean that you have to do it that way or that it's going to serve you better. Now let's look at an example that I found in an Etsy search page. So I found here dark, a dark green geometric pattern wool scarf, wool men scarf. And as you can see here, here, like again, this title normally would be something that worked in the past. But if I were going to change this to the 2024 standards, here are some of the things that I would do. So first of all, having never had any experience in this niche, I would really want to go and investigate further on what are really those best case scenario words for scarves, right? I would go ahead and search a keyword that's specifically describing this. So I would go green wool scarf. We're not getting super, super specific, but it's still clearly describing the basics of what the product is. Now I have this 500 more button here. This is a sales samurai Chrome extension and that's why I can check on the keywords. So what is, this is doing is it's pulling up all the related words to green scarf on this side. And on this side, they're showing me the search volume and the competition, right? So this is where we're taking a mix of data, but then also our own higher level thinking about how specific and how keyword product fit we can make this title. So what I'm going to do is sort it by search volume. So high search volume. And what we're looking for is what is the very best case scenario word that is a perfect keyword product fit with using words that are keyword opportunities 
that possibly have a lower search competition compared to the other words available to us, right? So sometimes you don't get this situation where you even have competition under 5,000, right? And that's okay. But in this case, it looks like we found that there is a lot of keyword opportunities that have really high comp, but really low comp. So we're prioritizing keyword opportunities that have low comp, high search, because obviously we'll be able to rank a lot easier for those words. So first, for, first things first, we have to find words that are relevant in actual keyword product fit for our product. So as we scroll down here, we can see that we have, I found a really interesting longer tail keyword here that is thin wool scarf. And as we can see, Thin Wool Scarf has 30,000 searches and only 2,000 competition. So if we go back to the listing there, this seller doesn't even have the word thin in here at all. To find a keyword opportunity with that much search, with that little competition, that is absolutely huge. So I'm going to prioritize that word thin very much so at the top. Another one that they have that they actually do have is Men Wool Scarf, which has 29,000 and only 12,000 competition, right? So that's absolutely huge. Now, in this case scenario, like I said, like there is actually a lot of keyword opportunities with low competition, but this does not happen all of the time. So if you don't find that you can find keyword opportunities with low competition relative to the other competition, right? Like this guy has 100,000 competition, right? Then what I'm really looking for is just, okay, what keywords are the best case scenario for keyword product fit with the highest search volume? that are very specific to what I'm selling. And I'm picking out those words and trying to organize them together where it makes sense. We have another one here that says deep green scarf, right? So I didn't see anything up here that said dark green. I didn't like army green, right? The first one that is using an adjective to describe the green is actually deep green scarf. And it's sitting at 28,000 searches with a really low competition, 2,060, right? So, oh, well, here's the next one, which is Army Green Scarf, right? So that's awesome. Another, I don't know, the scarf thing, like this is just super rare. So this is a really, really good product and a really good product opportunity to go after. Another one is Irish Wool. If it was Irish, I'm not totally sure. We can actually go back and check that. Yeah, I don't think it's Irish Wool, but if I was selling scarves, I would probably consider buying my wool from Ireland since that is a huge keyword opportunity. See, and here's an example where we have wool scarves handmade with 24,000 searches, but here's an example where the competition is relatively higher than the other really good keywords available to us, right? So handmade, even though it has a high search, right? Maybe I will still use it, but I'm not gonna prioritize it at the front since the competition is a much higher than the other other words. Okay, so now if I was writing this title, I would go something like this. Thin, deep, green. And remember, these are already in order from the highest search. I would go thin, deep, green, wool, scarf, now that we're at this point, right, the big question is, can I use commas? Can I use separators to separate this out? And if you go on forums, if you go on Reddit, if you look at an array of different places, you're gonna hear different answers. But the only piece of information that I found coming directly from Etsy was this on their website where it says, you can use punctuation and some symbols in your titles to separate the phrases. And Etsy search will still be able to read each of those phrases to see if they match with a shopper's search. So based off that, I, what I like to do is space it out with a comma. I don't do dashes anymore because from my understanding that counts as its own character, which is basically they're reading that and seeing if that's a keyword. So when you put a comma, it does not. Now this is what I personally do. And that is, again, that's the only piece of information that they have stated about what punctuation is even allowed. So a comma is a punctuation. So that that is what I personally use. Now here, building off this, I'm going to not repeat keywords. From here, we're going to go handmade fringe winter suit scarves men's gift. Now, again, this is basically coming straight from the data we pulled from Sales Samurai, but also our own higher level thinking of what are the top performing words and what is actually a pure keyword product fit for what we are trying to sell. So it's pretty 
concise and to the point. We basically turn this into this. And as you can see, not one single word is being repeated. Now, again, Etsy is really cryptic and kind of confusing when it comes to keywords. So this could be subject to change a month from now, tomorrow. <laughs> but for the most part, I would say Etsy's AI and their algorithm is getting really smart about identifying what your product is, honestly, just based off of your past customers and your images. Like I swear to God, their AI nowadays like already knows what you're selling. And again, if you're not seeing the words that you've had after you've done this, I would really implore you to look inward first on your actual products because in most cases, 90% of the time when I talk to sellers, right, when they want to blame SEO for their problems, it's usually a matter of a product problem, not an actual SEO problem. Because if you're using all the tools like Sales Samurai and Everbee, or maybe you're not even using tools and you're just pulling keywords, you know, based off of, you know, some of your top competitors, right, it's likely that you found most of the best case scenario words that are available to you. So, and there is also, remember, all those other variables at play that is contributing to your SEO and your ranking, not just the keywords. Now let's talk about tags. So you have 13 phrase opportunities in your tags. And they're saying that some of the main to do's is obviously use all 13 tags do use multi-word phrases. So for instance, if we know that thin scarf is a really good keyword, right? Because of thin and we use thin scarf spelled S C a R F, right? Maybe we try thin scarves with a V, um, in the tags because we are doing a different placement of the longer tail keyword. So thin green scarves, right? Something like this, or even though those words exist in the title, we're putting them in the tags, but we're changing the placement of the actual words. But I wouldn't repeat the same long tail key phrases that are in the title in the tags. Obviously it will help you with making sure that those are priority, but but just so you can expand your searchability, right? I would make sure that you're changing up the placement. Eventually, once you have shop stats coming in, you are gonna have a section here called search terms, which it will then show you what buyers are actually searching for. So when you start getting thousands of impressions, hundreds of clicks, right? You can even fine tune even further. What are the exact words that people are searching? And then if you are missing any of those words, you can throw those back into your titles and tags and descriptions. Sometimes we get to the point where you're like, I literally cannot think of any other words that we can use. So to help expand searchability, that doesn't really just mean give up, right? We want to think of what are other words that we can add in there that could be a keyword product fit. Obviously broader words that are like gift for her or holiday gift, those are really, really broad. So we don't wanna prioritize those in the titles, but if we get to the point where we just literally can't think of any more words, here is a good list of questions to ask yourself. What type of product is it specifically? So if it's a gold necklace, what type of gold necklace? Is it a gold Cuban necklace? Is it a gold herringbone necklace? Is it a link, gold link chain necklace? Who is it for? Is it for women, men, children, grandparents, aunts? What is the main material? Was there a specific method you used to create the product? Did you sew it? Did you crochet it? Where will the item be used? Is it in your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom? A size is another really good term to use. Now, if a size is like super specific, like 17 millimeters or something like that, it's not likely that somebody is searching for something that specific. They could be, but I would usually save really, really specific descriptors like that in your description. Maybe not so much for your tags, but if it's a broad size, like a long lumbar pillow, right? Where it's a little bit more broad then those types of sizing keywords, I would maybe consider for tags. Are there any synonyms? Is there many ways to describe the item, right? So if you're trying to say purse, right? You could also use clutch. You could also use handbag. If it's for children, right? You have baby, you have infant, right? So all of those terms help you expand your searchability. Color is a really good one as well. Like as we saw, you have army green, you have dark green and deep green, right? So many different ways to, you know, get the same, same end result. What occasion is it for if there is an occasion or could it be for an occasion, right? If you're selling a gold necklace, maybe, you know, that's an evergreen product that could be sold all year round, but Valentine's day is coming up, right? Can we then stage that product where it makes sense for Valentine's day with a, you know, pink background or a heart graphic in the image? 
image, you know, when that holiday comes around to be more appealing to that specific customer avatar searching for that holiday. The next is your descriptions. So your descriptions are, again, the, that really good opportunity to add in all those synonyms, occasions, all the things that we just talked about to really help expand our searchability. And the big thing here and something that we used to do is like we would copy and paste all the keywords from our title and just throw them at the bottom of our description. They say that you don't really need to do this. We really want your description to be value packed and really consider all of your FAQ frequently asked questions that you get and make sure that you're overcoming those objections in your description while trying to expand your searchability with all of those keyword opportunities. And it is hard at sometimes, but like I said, like in all those examples, when you really sit back and think about it, there is a lot of synonyms. There is a lot of sizings. There's a lot of different ways to describe sizing, right? So there's just so many, so many different things that will help you expand your searchability when you sit and really deeply think about it more so than you think. And also a great resource to go to is chat GPT as well. That free chat GPT, right? So now more than ever, you know, we can go and utilize an AI tool like this to really help us think of more keywords to describe our set of products. Outside of our titles, tags, and descriptions, remember we have our category and then we also have our attributes, right? So the attributes will pop up after the category, right? So if we have any of these options to input something, try to put in something if you can, because again, if they're seeing that repeated multiple times, especially with your attributes, your title, your tags, it is going to make it a priority words or attributes or keywords or whatever when it comes to your SEO. Same thing, obviously, with your category. Really, really don't misplace your category because that could really, really mess up your SEO as well. Overall, guys, I'm going to link all of the Etsy pages and articles down below so you can read those yourself. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I put out videos about Etsy, about Shopify that go way beyond just SEO. I talk about Etsy ads, hiring and firing employees, right? All all of the things. There's hours, thousands of hours of information in my channel for free. So make sure you go to any of my playlists about Etsy, e-commerce, business theory, um, if you are seeking more guidance when it comes to your online business. But thank you guys so much for staying till the end and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye guys.